happy Mother's Day, moms. We just wanted to reach out and give you something special because we love you. We're coming for you. Thank you so much, Parkside, for my Mother's Day present. I really appreciate it. I miss everyone. I love you guys a lot. Thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day! Good morning, Parkside, and happy Mother's Day. Um, I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to jump right into worship. God, we are so thankful for this morning and this time to come together. Um, and through this weird season, Lord, it's still awesome just to be together as a family and worship you, Lord. And God, we're super thankful for all the moms represented in Parkside today. Um, God, just take this service and have your way in Jesus name. Amen. You free and 
every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken life, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. God, you Yes, God, you do great things, God, in this world and in our lives, Lord. So, Holy Spirit, we just surrender to you right now in our homes and in our living rooms today. God, just let your presence fill our lives, Lord.
the goodness of God. Yes, Lord, we sing of your goodness, God. In a world that seems dark and confused right now, Lord, we proclaim that you are good and that your light is still shining through us and through others around us, Lord. God, that we submit ourselves to you, Lord, that we stop. God, I pray that we would just stop and listen to your voice today. And God, as we transition into the word today, God, I pray that you would give us ears to hear and eyes to see. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Mother's Day, Parkside. Hey, all of you uh, moms, moms for many, soon to be moms, moms one day. We love all of you and want to celebrate today. I want to say a couple things. The first one is this. Hey, would everybody at some point go to parksidechurch.cc slash Sunday and fill out the community card. It's especially important in this season. Hey, you fill that out. And if it's your first time here or second time here, or you've just not filled out a card yet, hey, do that. And we would love to send in the mail a really cool gift for you just to say thanks for checking out our church. Also, you can give at parksidechurch.cc slash Sunday. And you just need to know that when you give, you don't give to Parkside, you give through Parkside to impact North County, the West, and the world. Just this past week, we gave several thousands of dollars away to help plant churches all over North America and help with relief all over the country. Um, next week, uh, or two weeks from now, we're gonna be helping local families in a really big way. And we're helping one of our world partners in Africa that's been going through some really, really difficult seasons. So when you give, hey, you're going towards all that stuff. We wanna encourage you, hey, in this season especially, would you make your giving reoccurring? And you can do that online in a really easy way. And it's going towards change in the world. And there's a lot of need in our world. And we just want to say thank you. Hey, finally, hey, today, instead of me teaching like normal, hey, we went to a bunch of our moms who are just full of wisdom and five specifically. And we said, hey, if you could share any bit of wisdom on, on anything, you know, specifically connecting to, to motherhood and stuff like that, but would, would you be willing to share? And so Ashton, in a few moments, is going to introduce the five and they're each going to share something. And and I've seen it. It's awesome. Every single person, hey, you're going to want to take notes. It's going to be a great morning. And at the end, hey, I'll wrap it up. Hey, Daddy, give us a ride. Oh, man. All right. Hey, happy Mother's Day, everybody. Have a great service. Hey, Parkside, Brother Chris here. Did you know that one of Parkside's size values is big expected prayers? Just wanted to share one of my favorite things all week is getting together Sunday night, 6 30 to 9 30. Every 30 minutes, there's a new topic of prayer that starts up. There is power in people coming together in one accord in prayer. You can find the link at online at parkside.cc forward slash Sunday. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Men. Let's get all the work done so moms and wives can join in 30 minutes of prayer. It is Mother's Day. Hey Parkside, this is James and Micah. I just want to let you know on Sunday, May 24th, we're going to have one of the coolest services that we've ever had as a church. Uh, we're all going to meet at Temple Heights at 10 a.m. Don't worry, you don't have to get out of your car, but we're partnering with Vista Unified School District to bless some families that are in really big need right now. And so what we're going to do is get in a big line of cars. We're all going to drive up one house at a time, and we're going to roll down our window and tell people God loves you. And we'll each hand them, you know, five to 20 bucks or a roll of toilet paper or whatever you can afford uh, to, to bless them with. And uh, we just want to really bless our community. And it's going to be one of the coolest experiences we've had. So feel free to invite your friends and uh, get ready to be a blessing. Good. Happy Mother's Day. So you, you and Sean have two beautiful girls. What are their names and how old are they? 
Uh, they are Mahal and Analea, and they're five and two. That's awesome. And that is such a fun age. And so this year has been super transforming for you, uh, becoming a new Christian, getting baptized, so many awesome things. So through this year, can you share some wisdom? What has changed in your household in parenting the girls? Um, what has changed in the household? We are just doing more godly things together. Uh, at first, when I became a new Christian, it was just me doing the Bible studies, just me like listening to God's word, listening to worship on my own time. And then uh, Mahal really got into it. She got really into worship at first. And so I was like, this is something we can be doing together. And then, so it was just me and Mahal for a while. And then Analea came in and she just likes to dance and whatnot. But now we pray before dinner and before bed. So, and she's still learning, but Ani has recently started uh, folding her arms in for prayer. And that's awesome. And that foundation you are setting for the girls now is just going to be such a blessing when they're older to share that with them. And so through this year, what has God specifically been showing you as a mom? to be more patient with them and to just like stop comparing the both of them. Uh, Mahal was very like, she did things a, a lot, a lot came to easy for Mahal and I'm having to struggle to teach Ani to be potty trained or even talk. And so uh, just be patient with the both of them and let them learn at their own time. Island, thank you so much for joining us on our panel today. And I hope you have a very happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Hey, Holly, how are you doing? Hey, Ashton, I'm good. How are you? Good. Okay, so you are married to Kevin, and you guys have three kids. Can you tell us their names and how old they are? Yes, Kason is 23, and I now have a son, thanks to my husband, and the girls are super excited. They have a big brother now. And then there's Kylie, who's 15, and Mackenzie's 13. Awesome. That is so cool. So today we are interviewing moms. And so the reason why we wanted to interview you is because you and Kevin have a blended family. And so coming from a blended family, can you share some wisdom and uh, just through that process? Yeah, the main advice I would give is don't rush the process. Everything's brand new, everything's different. My girls were fearful at first and confused and didn't really understand what was going on. and. It was a time that we really, as new parents together, took the time to seek the Lord even more because it was so brand new and they didn't really quite understand everything that was going on. So I would say don't rush the process. Uh, allow them to process. Kevin was really, really good about talking to them and understanding their feelings and not requiring that him to be called dad or anything like that. He really gave them their time and their space that they need it. So that would be the most important advice I would say is don't rush the process. It'll happen when it's supposed to happen. And that's so awesome. And the way that you and Kevin came about it was just letting God lead the way was just, it's so awesome to hear that. And so during that whole process as a mom, what were some things that God was showing you? I would say what he showed me is that sometimes we don't understand why things happen my girls definitely didn't understand what was happening and why we were going through the situation we were going through before Kevin came into our lives. And I would say that God's timing is perfect to so always trust his timing. I've known Kevin since I was 16. And if we were reconnected any sooner than we had, it would have been a disaster because it wouldn't have been our focus on God. It would have been our focus on a relationship that was without God. Uh, he wasn't a believer when back in the day and I was a believer, but I wasn't walking the way that I should have been. But God brought Kevin into our lives at such a perfect time. Um, being a blended family definitely has its, its struggles. But something that Kevin always says, which I love, is it's not always easy, but it's always worth it. See, my girls get to see how their mom is supposed to be loved and how they're supposed to be loved. They didn't really receive that before. And if we had tried to do this any sooner, it wouldn't have been God's timing. And it had given Kevin and I a chance to grow together as a mom and a dad for our girls and show them what God's love looks like. And that is amazing, Holly, that you and Kevin are setting that foundation for your girls and, and your son. And hey, you guys are just doing an awesome job. And we're so thankful for you and your family. And I just want to say happy Mother's Day to you. And thank you for everything you do. Happy Mother's Day to you too, Ashton. Hey, Rebecca. Happy Mother's Day. How are you? 
I'm doing great. Thank you. And happy Mother's Day for you too. Thank you. I am so glad to have you on the panel today. So you and David have two boys. Uh, how old are they and what are their names? Yes, we have uh, Davi, 14, and we have Felipe, which is 12. That's awesome. Those are such a fun age. And so we have you on the panel today because we wanted to ask, because you have a preteen and a teenager, what is it like? And could you share a little bit of wisdom um, in just raising your boys? It's, uh, it's an interesting age. It's an adventure too. And there's a shift that I see happening where before it was really hands-on, but now I get to step back uh, more than I did before and wa watch them make their decisions, deal with some consequences. So it's a, it's a different vibe. And I know it's only the start of it, but I see it happening now. That's so awesome. And through that process of watching the boys kind of walk in their own uh, uh, relationship with the Lord, what has that like been? What has that been like for you? What has God been showing you through that process? Yeah, we're we're very hands on with studying the Bible with the boys. We just finished the book of Mark, and it's really interesting to see their questions and they get into conversations with us more often, some hard questions too that they ask. Something God has been showing me and teaching me is about being patient because sometimes we want to see things happening quick uh, in their lives, but it's a process. And uh, I, I always go back to Philippians 1, 6, that it says, um, he who began the good work will bring it to completion in my boy's life. So I just have to be patient and let God do his work as we do ours. He's with us in this. That's amazing. And do you have any advice for any moms that have teenagers and are raising them up, um, you know, in the same way and like encouraging these habits in them? Do you have any advice for maybe a mom that's going through that right now? Yes, um, because things change so fast at this age, learn to enjoy their world. Sometimes I don't want to watch a YouTuber or see memes with them on their phones, but just try to enjoy what they enjoy because that's a way where you can connect with them at this age because it was easier before, I think, with, because I was really involved in their playtime, but now I have to be really intentional in being with them. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being out here today, Rebecca, and thank you for sharing with us. Happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you for everyone watching us. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, Roxana, how are you? Hi, good. How are you? Good. Happy Mother's Day. We are so glad to have you on this panel. Thank and so you. you and your husband, Hedges, have one son. Can you tell us his name and how old he is? Caleb is, uh, his name is Caleb, and he's 15 years old. Awesome. And so you and Hedges had some, I think, just unexpected blessings um, through raising Caleb, honestly, with raising a kid with special needs. So can you share some wisdom and um, through your testimony? We found out Caleb had autism when he was three. We were living abroad. We thought we would go back to Japan as missionaries. Um, that was completely changed. Um, we decided to come back here in order to get Caleb the best services that we could get him. Um, so God really rerouted what was our original, what we thought was God's calling for us. Um, and he really radically changed that calling, um, at, you know, with our lives here in America now. Um, and I kind of, the idea of calling and the idea of, of trusting the Lord are two of the biggest things that I've, that we've really learned in our family. Um, I think that one of the things is we forget is that we are raising kids for their future. Um, we're not raising kids for like a nebulous the future. God has a calling and a plan for the lives of our kids. And so one of the things that I, we have discovered is that God has a very specific plan for Caleb and a specific plan for us. Um, and it's a privilege and a joy for us to walk in that. We have our challenges. It's difficult in many ways. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's been really neat to see how God has transformed us as people um, through Caleb and how also God is working in Caleb's life. And that journey, it just sounds so just amazing that God had guided every step that you and Hedges had with Caleb. Um, and through all of that, 
uh, what was God just showing you as Caleb's mom? I think one of the things as a mother, I, I there are so many things, right? I, I could talk for hours about that. As a mother, I think that it, again, it just made me far more compassionate. And I began to see perhaps, you know, as God was showing me, I don't want to sound like I can see as God sees, of course, but um, the way that God sees us, the grace that he has for us, the, the love that he has for us, um, you know, seeing any kind of difficulty that Caleb has and wanting so much for him to trust the Lord and to know that he can walk in the Lord in freedom with being who he is, that's a very important thing, I think, for all of us to learn. Um, and I think that just seeing, wanting him to be free to be who he is and to have people to love him for who he is um, taught me, well, I, that's how God sees us. That's what God wants for me to do with the people around me. Let them be who they are, love them, and just help them to grow and walk in their calling that God has for them and in what God has for their life. One thing I just wanted to encourage people in is, um, you know, there can be so much fear um, when you have a child with special needs and just having a child, right? You know, I think more than anything, we, we fear the things that happen to them. We fear the things that come into their life, the things that are around them. Um, one thing God, and it's, he's still working on me a lot with this, is just teaching me that radically walking in obedience to God and, and walking in his will is the safest place to be. I think a lot of us um, get nervous and scared as parents and as mothers in particular. Um, I just really want to encourage mothers out there, especially if that's how you're feeling, um, to know that when you are in the Lord, and you are walking with him, that that is the best place for you, that's the best place for your child, and that you can trust him. Um, it's when we compromise that we enter into, I guess you could say danger, um, because compromise kind of cuts down the, the, the truth boundary that God has around us. Um, I just wanna encourage people to radically trust God and who he says he is, because he is who he says he is, and he has the best plan for us. So whatever God's brought into our lives, into our kids' lives, um, when we obey the Lord and we walk in him, um, you know, God has so many great plans for us. And that's the best adventure for any of us as parents, but especially for those of us with special needs. kids. Oh, amen. I mean, that is so good. And you know, my heart definitely resonates with that. And uh, just sharing that adventure and like that journey with you guys is just awesome. And having you guys at Parkside is just a blessing. So thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and just your heart for Caleb and just as a mom. So happy Mother's Day to you. Yeah, to you too. Thank you. Good morning, Rachel. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, good morning, Ashton. How are you doing? Good. And we are so glad to have you on our panel today. So tell me, you and, Jay, you and Jim have three kids and tell me their names and how old they are. Yeah. So we've got Jaden, who's 10. No, he's nine. He's going to be 10. Uh, Jordan is six and Josie is five. They all have birthdays in the next uh, month or so. So they're all going to be aging up. And then some of you guys know we have a, um, uh, an emergency foster placement currently too. So we have a fourth, fourth uh, kid in the house too. That is so cool. And so for Mother's Day, we are asking moms some specific questions to them. And so just a few years ago, you didn't even want to go to church on Mother's Day. So can you share a little bit on why that is? Yeah, so uh, first and, and I think only time ever in my life that I, I wanted to ditch church, it was 10 years ago, uh, and we were a couple years into our, our struggle with infertility. And Mother's Day is just, um, it's a beautiful day at churches and I love that they make moms feel special. Uh, but when you want to be a mom and you don't, you can't, uh, it's painful. And so I told Jim, I can't, I can't go to church this year. And so, um, we went away for the weekend and it, it, it was nice, but, but it was, it was weird. Yeah. And I know that through that process, there must've been so much growth. So in that whole process of the infertility and versus now, what has God shown you as a mother? Yeah, uh, I reflect on that a lot, especially this time of year. Um, and really recently I've been thinking about 
about it, I think it was about 11 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, that Pastor Hal at New Song was going through a, a series on, um, or maybe it was just one talk uh, about uh, when we became, when we become a, a believer that God gives us a new name. And I'd heard that concept before and, and it wasn't a, anything new, but he had us uh, do an exercise where he put names on, on the screen uh, from the Bible, like, uh, you know, redeemed and loved and, and um, you know, a masterpiece and things. And so I was kind of going through the motions um, you know, not really thinking about it. And then, um, a name seared into my, my brain forever. And I still think about it a lot. And it said mother to many. And it just hit me because again, this was during the time where I wanted to be a mom and, um, and wasn't. And so I really felt like God gripped my heart and said, you are a mother to many, um, whether or not I ever give you a child of, of your own. Um, and so at the time I knew I was in uh, youth ministry and, and I was a teacher. And so, yeah, I had all my students and, and it, that helped a little, you know, gave me more of a purpose that I could mother these other teenagers in my life. It didn't fill the deepest need in, in, in my, or deepest desire in my heart. Um, but that kind of started it going. Um, and then we decided to pursue adoption. And so I became the mother to Jaden. Uh, and then three years later, we got to adopt his sister, Jordan. And it, the pieces, you know, kept coming together more. And, and as God gave me, um, you know, kids to raise in my own home, but I was still doing youth ministry um, and, and started really resonating with that. Hey, I am a mother to many. And then uh, God surprised us with uh, Josie, our miracle baby. Um, and then I'm like, okay, I'm a mother to too many right now. <laughs> um, but then um, in the last couple of years, God has called me into children's ministry, which I always wanted to stay far, far away from because I loved my own kids, but I really didn't like other people's little kids that much. Uh, and God has given me a love for other people's kids. <laughs> uh, and um, just as I've been in this, this role where I can um, pour into other kids and other families. And then our heart is still for foster, um, the foster system. And so, um, well, and just the neighbor kids, we want to be the home where people come to stay. And so Jim and I have talked a lot and, and I always told him, I think God wants us to get back into fostering. Um, and Jim's like, no, he doesn't. We have plenty on our plates. Um, and I said, okay, well, if, if a kid falls in our lap, maybe that'll be God. Uh, and he agreed to that. This was a couple years ago. And since then, we've had several kids that we've been able to, to take care of, most notably um, right now, um, where it, it's been evident that God wanted us to invest in this child and, and this family. Um, so, and I've been thinking about this mother to many um, a lot in, in just the last two weeks with this and going, okay, God, is this the new path that you have us on that we're going to keep, um, helping and supporting kids that, that their, their whole entire families need that support. And uh, I kind of want to run the opposite direction because it's really hard. Um, uh, but I don't know if that's the name God's given me. Um, who am I to second guess him? <laughs> Uh, and if I can say, so moms, or no, not moms, women who are struggling with with wanting to be a mom and not, I don't know if you'd even make it to the service today, because if you're anything like me, you will, you'll stay far away from church on, on Mother's Day. But if you're listening, uh, if I can just speak into you that there are several verses um, throughout the Bible where, where God speaks to women, uh, and first of all, that we're more than just our ability to bear children. Um, and he does have um, special promises that he will make us a mother. And, and sometimes it's, it's through the birth of a child, but sometimes it's just through investing in kids around you. Um, and if you ever want to talk to somebody, please come talk, re reach out to me because I am really passionate about that. And I would say, if you know someone that is struggling with that, um, reach out to them today or this week and just, um, I don't know, be extra kind and, and say some prayers for them because it's, it's, it's hard. Hey, mother to many, that is amazing. That is so awesome. And the foundation that you're setting for your kids and the kids that come across your path is just a, a testimony in itself. So we are so thankful for you and what you do and um, happy Mother's Day, Rachel. Hey, Parkside. It has been an awesome morning today. I am so thankful for all the moms I got to meet with and hear all the wisdom that they had. Uh, we're going to sing one last song 
before closing the service. So wherever you're at in your room, let's stand and worship. song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you and hope Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Whether you uh, are a mom or mom of kids or desire to be a mom someday, 
uh, or you're a mom to many and you impact a lot of other kids in their lives, we just want to say thank you. This is your day. And really, every day should be yours. But today's message, uh, you guys gave. Thank you, ladies. I took notes and all of us should have. Incredible wisdom that was there. Um, I'm going to give the mini, mini, mini message, like under five minutes. And I'm titling it, Things That We Learn From Jesus and Moms. And um, I'm sitting in my car because I read a coronavirus meme yesterday that said, one version of self-care in this season is sitting in the driveway in your in your car. And that's true. Hey, I'm sitting here and it's way more peaceful here than it is in my house right now. And let me read to you. This is Philippians chapter two. I'm going to start in verse three. Here's what it says. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So it's incredible truth that if there was ever somebody that came and could have said, I'm God, man, it's all about me, could have been Jesus. And instead it says he lived a life of humility. I've shared this before, but this is a really simple truth that I learned from my own mom and I see my wife live out as a mom all the time. There's two kinds of people on the planet. There are here I am kind of people. Those are people that go, here I am, I walk in the door, hey, meet my needs, hey, listen to me, it's all about me. And then there's there you are kind of people. And those are people that walk in the door and go, there you are, I see you. What's going on in your life? Hey, sure, what's going on? How can I serve you? How can I help you? And we love having there you are kind of people in our lives. And Jesus was an incredible example of that. And constantly seeing the people that everybody missed and serving them like crazy. I mean, he, he saved them, right? Through living a life of obedience, even to death on a cross. And moms do that in a really powerful way as well. They live lives of other centeredness, of humility, of, of meeting the needs of other people. Um, and I want to challenge all of us. One way that we honor mom is by trying to be like her and being a there you are kind of person. And I want to give you three statements that I want you to say today. And then hopefully you'll say every single day. Here's the first one. Thank you. Can we all practice that? Ready? One, two, three. Thank you. Hey, do you realize all the things others do for you and specifically on a day like today that your mom does? Like I'm getting ready to drive to Walmart to go buy toilet paper. And I'm realizing in my 42 years on the planet, I have never once, I think, gone somewhere to buy toilet paper. Maybe it's, I've been thrown in before, but I don't know. I, I think I've just, someone's always gotten it for me. That's amazing. If you're a little kid, if you thought about this, that when you were a baby, hey, your mom wiped your buns, like from gross stuff. You ever stopped and said, thank you. There's so many things that we take for granted in life, get in the habit of regularly. And today just saying, thank you. Thank you for say those words. Those, that's the first one. That's how you be a there you are kind of person. Be like mom. The second is this. How can I help? Can we practice this? Ready? One, two, three. How can I help? Yeah, if you're going to be a there you are kind of person, that means you're going to see the needs of other people and you're going to ask, hey, how can I serve you? It says at one point in scripture, Jesus, even the son of man, didn't come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. You want to knock your mom out of a chair and be like, whoa, what happened to my kids? Ask her this question, mom, hey, how can I help? And then whatever she says, do it and, uh, and listen. Maybe it's just she wants you to listen. But anyways, how can I help and serve? And then the third one, this, this is the bonus one, but say this and uh, man, it'd be huge. You go first. We practice with my life, my kids all the time on this one. You go first. Let's say it together. Ready? One, two, three. You go first. Say that to others, especially mom who usually goes last. She's the last one to sit down at the table. She's the last one to, with everything in life, go to sleep at night. Hey mom, you go first. Say that, man, and you are living a life like Jesus and like mom. There you are. Thank you. How can I help? You go first. We love you moms. Let's pray together. Dear God, thanks so much, Lord, for the moms in our life and for all the people that pour into us. And some of us, this is a really difficult day. God, would you be near and dear to us as maybe we're struggling because we didn't have a great mom or we've lost our mom recently or we really want to be a mom. 
Um, God, will we feel your presence, God, even in this tough season and help us to pour compassion on others. God, help us learn from the moms you've given us in our lives um, to be there you are kind of people. God, we love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Parkside, you are sent. I love mom so much. I love mom that she comes me in the morning. I love mom so much because she's a good teacher with me in homeschool. I love my mom the most because she loves me the most. The one thing I love about my mother is that she's never too busy to be a blessing to others. My favorite thing about my mom is she does is basically everything and that she loves me with all her heart. She's sweet always. I love about my mom that she um makes the best mom. I love about my mom that she makes good food. I think one of the things I love most about my mom is her humble heart to serve others. Um, mommy, be next people. It's called I eat chucky food guys. She makes you food and stuff? Mm -hmm. Awesome. My mom is always there for me. I love my mom because she loves me. What I love most about my mom is that she gives me hugs. The reason I love my mom is because we're um, like best friends and sisters and we've been through a lot since uh, day one together. I love my mom because she's sweet and whenever I'm sad she cheers me up. That's why I love my mom.